In today's show, we're talking all things NBA draft, looking at the latest mock drafts from around the internet, and it's Tankathon Friday. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What? Up, world! It's your past first point guard and trailblazers reporter Mike Richman. You're listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So make it a part of your daily routine. Tell your friends to do the same. Make it your first listen as Locked On Blazers, your team every day. Today's show, a draft heavy Friday episode. I um, scoured the internet for the latest uh, mock drafts from my favorite draft prognosticators. Some some of my faves haven't updated it. They'll probably wait for post -tur post NCA tournament rush to, to get it out there. But I got some uh, some draft some mock drafts that we will look at. Blazers likely to have two lottery picks um, unless those dastardly Warriors end up making the playoffs and then they'll just have two first round picks uh, at just outside the lottery for the second one. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at those. Um, I want to talk a little like theoretical approach to the draft, both um, my personal opinions, which don't matter very much, and then what I think the Blazers are going to be might be forced to do in this in this strange draft with the season that they've had and the situation they're in. Um, my opinions matter. You're listening to the podcast. That was a little dismissive. Uh, what I meant is my like um, my th draft theory is maybe not um, the strongest part of my basketball opinions. Uh, you know, I've been doing this long enough to have opinions you should value, but um, I'm not a draft expert. Then we'll close the show. Tankathon. That's what we do on Fridays. We take a spin on the Tankathon machine. Let let's let's get into the to the to the latest mock drafts, and then and then we'll talk some sort of draft approach thoughts. Uh, I have I have a, a couple that I, I want to make sure that we touch on here, including some hard truths about the Blazers roster. Uh, let's start with ESPN, who I think they have the funniest mock draft for the Blazers. Uh, this this is uh, ESPN Jeremy Wu and Jonathan Giovanni. They are they get it right. They get it right. Like they're they they got the most first round picks right of anyone who did a mock last year that I saw. Like they just they they talk to folks. They know things. That this duo um, of, of Wu and Giovanni they they just they get it right. Do they have it right in April? It would be hilarious. The Blazers have you know two picks. Uh, the lottery will determine what they actually pick, and that will kind of change the sort of change the game and mock draft stuff, but but everyone's just doing it by chalk for the most part. So the Blazers are picking at 5 and 13. Uh, Nikola Topic at 5, um, an 18-year-old 6'6 point guard who's not a great shooter but has real craft and good touch driving to the rim. Um, he's probably, I, I haven't seen anyone describe him as anything other than a point guard. You know, he's big, right? But he's a big frame. But I haven't seen anybody describe him um, as anything other than a point guard. But regardless of position, uh, you know, big 18-year-old Serbian who was going to operate on the ball as sort of like a crafty pick-and-roll player uh, and and has, for the most part, been around this top five since draft season really started in, like, December. I, once, the first time I heard Topic's name was from friend of the pro, uh, friend of the program, Raphael Barlow of Locked and NBA Big Board. No, but I had not heard anyone else mention him or write about him. Uh, Raphael had a big piece on him, and then he said, like, Topic could be in the conversation for the number one pick, and then all of a sudden he's everywhere. Like, everywhere, everyone has him in the top five. Um, Topic at five, I want to talk about, like, what that would mean in the second segment, because that's it creates an interesting situation with the Blazers. ESPN second pick, so Tobich at five. The, with the Warriors pick, the Blazers would take Zach Eady from Purdue. <laughs> this is like the funniest possible draft. So they would take a point guard and back-to-back -back with a top five pick and back-to-back -back picks through three consecutive years t using a top seven pick on a guard. And then they would take Zach Eady, a dude who's got a second round grade and is probably like, you know, um, one of the most, maybe the most controversial player who's going to be drafted in the top 20 in terms of upside. They'd take him at 15, or 13. <laughs> That's a lot. That's pretty funny. That's a funny draft. Um, I am not an ED believer to the point where I think he, I, I don't think he's, I don't look at him and say like that dude's definitely going to be a good NBA player. What I look at him and say, he's 
big and he mashes and the and the productivity is undeniable and the people who know stuff keep saying he's going to go in the top 15 picks. Will that be the Blazers at 15? Uh, I'll say ESPN had Chris Murray at 23 to the Blazers for like a month. And you know who the Blazers took at 23? They took Chris Murray. So um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't put it in pen. I wouldn't even get your nice highlighter out. But if you have a bad highlighter, I would hi- I would use the bad highlighter on Zach Eady's name here in April. Uh, we're a long way away from uh, from figuring out where the, where the draft actually happens. We haven't even hit. We're not even in May when the with the lottery or Ju- or much less June when the draft happens. That's ESPN's mock: Nikola Tobich and Zach Eady. Uh, uh, Kevin O'Connor of the Ringer re- recently released a mock as well, where he has the Blazers taking with their two picks: Ron Holland and Tijon Salah. I like this in theory, although I have some concerns. Um, Ron Holland, when I saw him play for the Ignite, uh, the biggest thing I noticed is that he was listed at six foot eight and he's like six five, six six, six six five, six six. He's like a two three and he was billed to me. Someone who didn't know anything about him when he was a high school student as like six eight power forward type, right? When I, I thought he was when he was going to Texas and he was gonna be this high level college recruit. It's like I thought he was like a big six eight power forward. And then I saw him play for the G League Ignites. Um and I like he's like a he's like a wing. He's like a two he's like a two three. He's like a shooting guard small forward type. Um good athlete, gets downhill, can't really shoot. In the game I saw he shot well, but did the one of his misses, which is like horrible and you could tell like oh maybe the maybe the uh that is not like a super consistent looking jump shot but he played really hard in that game he was the best player on the floor um maybe Ashton Hagens was but I I think for me I think Ron Holland was better than him um you know he's gonna go somewhere in that five through 15 range five through 12 range uh I don't hate it because I think he has upside and I think the athleticism and the motor probably translates to an NBA player. Is he like top five pick worthy? I don't know, but who this draft is weird that way. I don't think there's there's some obvious locks. I I, I wouldn't if the Blazers end up with Ron Holland in that in, at five and and based on their loss to the Hornets or and by that I mean win based on their win over the Hornets they're they're almost certainly going to end up with the fifth best fifth best lottery odds. So. Um, if they end up, you know, in that five, six range and take Holland, I, I'm not going to like, I think it'd be fine, but I, I maybe not am super excited about it. Tijon Salon, I, I, I like the upside swing. Like he's giant, right? He's like a six eleven wingy type, like, and he has this, uh, he's the upside pick because, which means if you're an upside pick, it means naturally you have a really low floor. It's like, oh, well. Maybe he can't do a lot. Like maybe, maybe what you're seeing is someone with like tools, but they never get sharpened into being so, get something that gets crafted. It's like, oh, maybe he can shoot. Maybe he can. Maybe he can uh, play make and do and make some make some plays off the dribble at at that frame. And like he's a true six eleven small forward. And oh wow, this is like um, Giannis ultra. You know, caffeine free diet Giannis. Um, something like that. And that intrigues me to no end. And at 13, for where the Blazers are, I would be really, really in favor of them taking an upside swing, knowing that you might miss, knowing that you might miss. Uh, but like, you might miss. <laughs> I think that I think that's the other side. Um, then Bleach Report, Jonathan Wasserman has uh, the Blazers. This actually might be the funniest mock draft. This is up there for the funniest mock draft. He has the Blazers at five, taking Donovan Klingon, one of the big risers of the NCAA tournament. Um, he, the last game Klingon played, he looks really good. ESPN has him all the way up at three. Um, dude made some money in March. <laughs> he really did. He made some money in March. Um, he, 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 defensive upside with the sort of versatility, he's huge, right? Seven two seven seven wingspan and some versatility to play, to move laterally and play a couple different schemes on defense. Just really smart player, can pass a little bit, finishes around the rim with touch. And like, you know, the draft people think like maybe he could become a shooter, which is like, I feel like a funny thing they say about other guys who shoot okay from, who have like good form, but he hasn't shot well from the free throw line. I feel like he's a play finisher on offense right now and like a really intriguing just like giant um, defender with some versatility on, on the other end. And that, and that in this draft might mean that you go five. I wouldn't hate it at five. I wouldn't hate it. Um, I might not love it, but I wouldn't hate it at five. I, I, 
the, when I have, uh, I've mentioned this before, I've seen Klingon and when he plays his best, I'm like, yes, that's clearly an NBA player for a long time. That's like, you know, th- that's Steven Adams, right? Like that's a dude who, who starts in the league for a decade. And then when, and earlier this year he was hurt and dealing with some foot stuff. And so I, I saw a, a game of his where I was like, he is so low. And I was more worried about him. I feel less worried now. I feel less worried now. Um, the last game, the last time I saw him play basketball, um, heading head in, in the elite eight to make the final four or Sweet 16 a weekend, like he looked incredible. He looked incredible. Um, so I'm not surprised he's climbing up the draft boards because I all I too saw that game. Uh, and then Wasserman has the Blazers with their second lottery pick, taking Kyle Filipowski from Duke. Two bigs, like I don't, I don't get it. I, the draft doesn't that that particular approach doesn't make sense to me. Um, I think they just need more. It's not like they're they're so thin up front that they like have space for both those guys to play. Like DeAndre Ayton is going to be on the roster next season, barring something very strange happening, and he's going to play thirty four minutes a night. Um, there's like fourteen backup big man minutes. Maybe if if Ayton slips down to thirty two minutes a night, there's as many as sixteen backup big man minutes. Hard to split that between those two gentlemen and Duopreef and like whatever Rob Williams can give you. Um, I think it's fine to draft one. I think two's weird. I'm not a big Phil Pawski believer. Um, I mentioned on the last show when I did this last week, um, heading into the heading into the Sweet 16, that I thought Phil Pawski, when I've watched him play, the number one thing that I worry about is that he gets bossed by more physical defenders or more physical offensive players. And you know what happened? They made the Elite Eight, and my dude DJ Burns bossed him. He beat him up. He he bullied him with with quickness. He beat him with his with his good feet. And when when he wasn't bullying him, he bossed him because he's bigger and more physical than him. And I just see that happening a bunch to Filipowski in the next level. If he doesn't shoot, if he isn't a really good offensive player, I I, I have some questions about what he does because he seems not quite fast enough to play the four and just not quite strong enough right now to play the five. Players get stronger. Um, and I think Filipowski is skilled enough at his size as a passer and a, and with a good sh- touch inside to end up as a top 20 pick in this draft. No problem. I just wouldn't be excited about um, picking him at 13. Also, like I, he, he went to Duke. I'm a Carolina guy. I'm a hater. Uh, it's, it's in my bones. Um, but that's full disclosure. Okay, I have some thoughts about this. When you think about Nikola Topic and you think about Donovan Klingon and you think about even Zach Eady and Kyle Filipowski to some extent, it's like, don't they already have that? And I think that brings up a question for the Blazers. How do they approach this draft with so many young parts and so many developmental minutes that they sort of already have promised or at least earmarked? Let's talk about how to approach a strange draft with or this draft with a strange roster situation and the hard truths that might come with it. That's what we'll do in the second segment. First, let me tell you about Robin Hood. Did you know that if you've got a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a boost, 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitation, limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. All right. So I wanted to run through those mock drafts. One, because like these people know more about the draft than me. And I think who, where draft experts are kind of prognosticating the Blazers might go is, um, is interesting to track from like April when they, when folks really start rolling it out. Um, uh, friends of the program, former guests in the program, Kristen Peake, who, who, who comes on usually this time of year has not rolled one out. Sam Vecini, who, who I think is, is as good as they get at it, has not rolled a new draft board out or a new mock draft out. And Raphael Barlow, um, Many time guest, friend of the program, friend of me, uh, has hasn't doesn't have a new mock. So when we when those come out, we'll keep rolling them forward. But what all of them are going to present is that the Blazers have this strange situation. They have a strange situation. 
they don't have good enough players on the roster right now, period, full stop. They don't have good enough players in the roster right now that anyone in the draft should prevent them drafting over them. That includes Scooter Henderson and Shaden Sharp. That includes Anthony Simons and Malcolm Brogdon and Jeremy Grant. And it certainly includes DeAndre Ayton. There's not a single player on the Blazers roster as we stand here today that is so that is so good that it would be a mistake to draft over them. But boy, would it be weird if they drafted Nikola Topic. Here's, here's what I mean by that. You got to trust the NBA teams know significantly more about this than, than we do, right? So if the Blazers book says... We have Topic as the number one, as the best offensive player in this draft. He's saying, you know, the pick and roll maestro, all these things. Like what he's doing at 19 and in, in, in Europe is, is it, it, we projected as this and this and this. We being the Blazers front office. Uh, speak, I'm speaking um, third person once removed or whatever. Third person conditional removed uh, like Hubie Brown. But, uh, you know, if, if they say... Tobich is, Tobich is the, we think he's the best offensive player in the draft. We would have taken him one, you know, like we've, we would have taken him number one overall, but he fell to five. And we look at the rest of our board and six and seven and eight are just like, you know, on the, on the, you know, the, who, who's going to be available behind him are way lower on our board. Then they might have to, to, to look in the mirror and make some hard truths. We view this player as so valuable to the franchise that we the level of franchise investment that we've put into Scoot Henderson at three, we are going to have to reconfigure what that looks like. And we're going to have to um, basically immediately trade every Simons and, and, and Malcolm Brogdon because we need to clear space, right? We can't have seven guards. Uh, they can't have seven guards. They, they I think the magic number is three plus three dudes who play every night and four and five who are like good enough to play if you need him. That's like the magic number on a good team is, is three plus plus but like only three that you're playing every night a three like a, a pretty normal three guard rotation and your fourth guard is like a backup guard who plays eight minutes or zero minutes depending on depend, depending on uh, on your needs but but for example i'm not saying topic that i feel this way but for example uh, based on sort of the espn mock here it's like if you get to five and you think like the talent is undeniable we can't pass up on the upside here and we've put ourselves in this position where like we just have to then you then i don't think the blazers are in a i don't think scoot henderson has shown enough or, or shaden sharp has shown enough or, or obviously the vets like simons and and grant have shown enough that you that you can't make that decision but if you do make that decision it's cascading effects down the line and you, you think about the same thing with like the big guys right like if Klingon is really a top five pick and the blazers find themselves at five and it's like they really really value Klingon, um they they can't they cannot let the existence of DeAndre Ayton cloud their decision making on the draft board, right? And what what I mean by that is like you have to be, you got to trust NBA teams. You know they build their book, they know these things. They 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 they, they you cannot get caught up in what the roster looks like on this currently not good team. Help make decisions about what the future could look like if. You are certain or you feel certain, I guess is a better way to talk about drafts because there's no certainty. If you feel certain that this guy is so good, he's not, that we can't, we will regret passing him up, right? And I think it's fine if, if like, if Klingon is a, is a low minute guy in, in, in year one, right? Like if he, if he plays, if he's like, if there's even only 15 minutes available to him, like he might not even play that much, but there's only 15 minutes available to him in year one. I, I think that's fine, right? He's a college sophomore. Uh, he played limited minutes even as a freshman in college. He's he's ramping up just to playing like sort of major minutes even in year two. And 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 um, like he was, he, he's he's on a, he's on a deep team that rolls people. He doesn't play 40 minutes a night like some college guys, 37 minutes a night with like one, one first half rest. Like it just, that's not his role. It hasn't been his role. He's been a, he's been a lower minute guy in college. And I think that's, that's fine. If it starts that way, like specifically with Klingon, I think it'd be fine with some other, with, with other youngsters. I think it'd be fine if Topic had a relatively small role, but, a, but if you draft a guy at five, they have to play on a bad team. Like you can't, you can't not play him. It's just how much do they play? Like, but if but if he were to play, you know, whatever, 24 to 28 minutes, kind of like Scoot did this year, it's like maybe not ideal, but it's not like it's not going to ruin their career or anything. But I think that's the hard truth is that it's a weird situation where the Blazers do not have enough current talent in the stable where you have to say, well, we you can't draft a guard. It'd be weird if they did, but but 
if they if the team values a player that highly, there is no level of talent currently present on the roster that should that should prohibit them from doing things. And that that kind of gets the idea of fit versus best player, which is what people always talk about this time of year. Uh, and Raphael Barlow, friend of the podcast, I'll get him on the the, the show next week. I've been I've been referencing him now. He's busy. It's the NCAA tournament. Um, but Raphael helped me or has made the argument to me that I, I I mostly agree with that you best player available if they don't fit on your roster they're not the best available they're not the best player available to your franchise and I think there's some truth to that um but I also think there is at some point when you're doing this stuff the exercise of drafting you you have to be honest you say okay well they don't fit on the roster now but they're too good they are too good to not make it fit so Let's make the draft pick now. Let's make the hard decisions in the future. Um, I'm not saying like draft Topic trade Scoot. I don't know. I'm, I've watched YouTube videos of this kid. I don't. <laughs> what I know is that he's been hurt for a long time, so I haven't seen many new highlights. Um, so like, but I'm saying that there is the Blazers find themselves in a situation where they have a big summer ahead to get, sort of spearhead and and push forward what's next. And no one on the roster right now should be untouchable or like un. Um, you should you you shouldn't feel like you're crowding them out. You should feel like you have to do what's right for the franchise, which is draft the players that you believe are best. And if that is if those are centers and those are forwards and those are guards and they're going to crowd out centers and forwards and guards already on the roster, you have to do it with you have to move with certainty of action because um, that that's the situation they're in and that's just the talent level they're at. Okay, talk about certainty of action. How about a little, how about I play a little GM and we take our Friday tankathon spin uh, and see where the Blazers land, see where the fates of the of an internet simulation send the Blazers. That's what we'll do to close the show. It's Tankathon Friday, our, our fourth spin now in the tankathon of, of draft and uh, post All Star season. Join me in that third segment. First, let's talk about Fire TV. Amazon's Fire TV is just a way that you can watch the TV you already watch, either on Fire TV. It's either on the smart TVs they got and they they make, where you're going to find everything you want, from sports to the prestige television you're already watching, or you can just plug in a Fire Stick to your dumb TV and which is what I do at my house. And you'll have access to millions of movies and television episodes as well as free and live TV. So that's things like the baseball season now that it's here, the end of the college basketball tournament as uh, college basketball tournaments, both men's and women's as we get there this weekend. And then the NBA playoffs moving forward. Plus Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver you a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes us at, at the Locked On Podcast Network where we've got the Locked On Sports Today feed right there as, as a Fire TV channel where you can get the latest news from every major sports league in North America from the Locked On hosts, a 24-7 channel streaming right there on the Fire TV channel. So if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices, you should. Trust me on this. Learn more. Visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond, and you are still listening to Locked On Blazers. What we do this time of year is we take a little spin on the tankathon machine. I, I, I kind of talked about my draft theory, right? It's like I'm a pretty big, I've, I've, I've long been a believer in best fit, but, um, Raphael Barlow has helped me see the idea of why best fit is specific to your franchise. And I think for the Blazers, they're amorphous. They're a, they're just a, a ball of clay. Um, they they can go in any number of directions. Um, Scoot Henderson, like they've got a lot invested in him, right? Like it, the best case scenario is that they don't put, find themselves in a spot where it's like where they have to talk you know, where they have to talk themselves into or out of like Reed Shepard or, or Nikola Topic, right? They can just draft a, a big or a wing and say like, we've got a young guard. Now we're putting him next to a young big and a young wing. I think that's, that would be an, a, a better situation for him. But like I said, if the draft board dictates it because the Blazers do their research and it's like, Hey, this, this is too good to pass up. Then, it, then it's too good to pass up. Right. Then, then, then it kind of is what it is. Um, I think the same with Biggs and DeAndre Ayton. If you if if one of these young big men, particularly Klingon, I think because he's he's and and Sar for sure, uh, but like but Sar could conceivably play next to 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 um, 
to Aiden for for a, a chunk of his career, so it's it's not a big of, as big of a decision. But like, you don't you you kind of just have to go with what you believe. Okay, this is this guy's gonna help. We have we just have to do it. So why don't we take a spin on the Tankathon machine and see what hard decisions I have to make as the fake GM. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, as always, this is live. So I'm just going to do it right here on my screen uh, and you get to watch me do it. And then we'll kind of talk through uh, where the Blazers end up. Uh, this is the Blazers, like I said, are probably locked in to the fifth uh, best odds, fifth worst record in the NBA, thanks to beating the Hornets on Wednesday evening. So let's let's take a spin. Here where the Blazers end up. Oh no, they dropped down two spots to seventh. So the Blazers are going to end up with seven and 13. I've done this a couple times. Uh, this is my fourth time. Six, seven, one, and seven. I uh, haven't dropped up to, jumped up to anywhere else in the top four. Uh, for, well, the way Tankathon does it, the Blazers are taking Rob Dillingham. I do not, I am not a Dillingham believer necessarily. Um, he might be good in the league. I just, uh, 63 guard of his ilk doesn't doesn't do it for me just too slender of a frame i i i think this is like um i don't think it's the type of player that excels in the modern nba um and i think even like to some extent like scoot size has been a problem in the league and he's just like a way bigger frame than than um than dillingham dillingham's a bucket though <laughs> <laughs> like he could score, he could score, and in and then particularly the college basketball level, like he, he he can really score. So, um, he wouldn't be me if I, if I'm there. I'm probably debating between, and I and I've done this before. Is is Matches Bazelis and 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 Stefan Castle? I probably lean Bazelis because of the upside. Um, you know, six ten and can handle. I'd probably if I'm at seven, I'm I'm, I'm I maintain my strong consideration for Bazelis. Like I, I've done this exact one before on Tankathon. I think it was Bazelis and Tijon Salon, um, because of the upside swings, right? And I think the Blazers owe themselves like as much as they just like the thing that's going to save their franchise this summer is like getting the draft right. But like what getting the draft right means is like you draft the best player, but it's like not, it's, it's kind of like the Giannis Antetokounmpo Bucks thing. It's not the best player in his draft class, right? Like it's not the best player in, in 20 in, in 2013, like when you hit the fall or even the spring of that year, it's the best player. Like, what are we 10, 10, 12 years removed from that draft class, 11 years removed from that, from that draft class. It's like moving forward into the, into, you know, you're projecting in year four and five, like, Oh, we've got a stud. So it's like, if, if Salon is going to be that guy, get it right. But you, with the t understanding the timeline, same thing with Bazellus. Like if he's, if he's a youngster, that's going to, um, I think he's going to be almost 20 when the, when the NBA season starts, but it's like, uh, like if if it's going to take a little bit, you, you you they just desperately need to get it right. Whether getting it right means a player who's rookie of the year or get it right who's a player who's an all star in year three, but like not particularly good right away. Like the thing that's going to save them this year is to, is getting it right. And for me, my, in the attempt to get it right, what my tendency here in this particular exercise would be which is to lean upside, lean guys who are who are pretty raw, like not like Dalton Connect doesn't do it for me. Like I bet he's going to be a pretty good NBA player right away. Cause he's 23 and he can really score, but like the Blazers don't need that. They need someone who has the potential to be a multi-time all-star. They're missing a star. They got to go star hunting. So that's, that's I, I think it would be, I'm still in that sort of bazellus salon situation spot. If the Blazers end up here, although like, again, and I'll say this for with a millionth time, it seems unlikely they bring two rookies from the lottery. They could because they can make whatever trades they want. Like there's no, there aren't any rules about it. They can make whatever trades they want and trade whatever veterans and move all the pieces around at, as as needed. But it seems unlikely with the amount of young guys they already have on the roster and the amount of investment, like sort of organizational investment when you have that many young guys in them, and those young guys continuing to prove. Bringing in two lottery pick rookies seems relatively unlikely. Um would a team trade up seven and thirteen to let let you get to one? I don't know, but would they maybe if they really vow if if because this draft is so flat, would they let you get to four for seven and thirteen and a future something? Maybe. 
Uh, I think the Blazers are in a, if, if the Blazers really like somebody, they're in a spot to make their move. Um, but they're also in a spot to kind of let the draft fall to them because again, like some teams might value a guy at five that falls to 15 pretty quickly in this draft because it seems like that beyond Sar, who seems to be the, the mostly the guy you see at the top and Risache and Topic, like at starting at four, it seems like it is so wide open between four and 15. And the Blazers might find themselves right there with a chance to either get exactly who they think after that, that sort of top three and who knows how it'll shake out. Cause all of a sudden ESPN has clinging at three, but like, They'll be in a great position to either get a guy they want or package their picks or get out of the draft because um, somebody likes it or like move back and still get the guy they want because someone values someone at four who they th- don't think they'll get. And the Blazers value someone who's going to drop all the way to 11 and all, and, and they can just g- get out of there, swap with the Hawks and make their move and, and end up with future draft capital for their troubles. Um, they they might be in an, they might find themselves in an okay spot, but Boy, do they need to get this draft right. It's imperative that they do so for the future of the franchise. Okay, that's going to do it uh, for shows this week. Um, I'm going to be out of town um, next week. I am planning to do shows. Uh, four shows next week. I have one travel day where I'm just going to be on an airplane. It's not going to happen. So you have four shows in your feed next week. Um, I just want to offer this caveat. Oh, I'm going to be out of my house. So things might change, but look for four shows in your feed next week. Uh, I'll try to finally nail down Raphael Barlow for an interview as well. I've been, I've been trying, I promise. Uh, let's do it. Four shows next week. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.